I'd like to highlight two accomplishments, Project AIM and our continued work on safety enhancements in the wake of the Fukushima Daiichi accident. With respect to Project AIM, we expect to receive in the spring of 2016 one of the most important products in the Project AIM effort, and that's the rebaselining report that the staff is working on. That rebaselining effort will help us look carefully at the agency's activities in the context of its safety and security mission to look for opportunities to be more effective, to be more efficient, and to focus on the right things as we carry out our work. The second accomplishment is reflected in our continued work and continued success in moving through the safety enhancements that we've identified with the industry and other stakeholders after the Fukushima Daiichi accident. 2016 marks the five-year anniversary of the accident, but what we're seeing in the United States is a continued successful effort at implementing the most important of the safety enhancements, those things that we called Tier 1 in the plan to address the Fukushima accident. We expect the industry to implement the bulk of these Tier 1 enhancements by the end of 2016. And these enhancements provide substantial added safety benefit from the lessons we learned from the Fukushima accident. I found that my past experience has informed the decisions that I've been making because I've been able to draw on some lessons that I learned earlier in my career and also to think about the experience of the agency when it's confronted some difficult choices in the past. I've reflected on the different roles I had as general counsel and as a commissioner and as chairman here at the agency. As general counsel, you're really in an advisory role. You're in the background to some extent, but your job is really to provide options and to inform decision makers. Well, in my role now, I am the decision maker, so it's important for me to listen to people both within the agency but outside the agency, the industry, other stakeholders who have an interest in what we do and are concerned about safety and security as we are. One of my jobs as chairman is really to be out front as the spokesperson for the agency. And I think that's something that I knew but really didn't understand until I experienced it this year. And that outreach really goes to all kinds of groups, all kinds of people. It goes to the Congress, it goes to the industry, it goes to non-governmental organizations and the public. It's about engagement in the international community and with our fellow regulators in the agreement states. And I also try to get out to the facilities that we license and to visit our regional offices and to, to meet with our inspectors in, in the field. So that takes time. I find it very interesting, but then I realize I also need to come back and work on the decision making that the commission needs to work through. We have some interesting work that's going to come before the agency in 2016 and will extend beyond. We've seen interest in establishing consolidated fuel storage sites and expect to receive applications from companies starting in 2016. We also expect to receive the first application for a design certification for a small modular reactor, or SMR towards the end of 2016, and that will be interesting work for the agency, as we also try to make sure that we're prepared for the possibility of advanced reactor designs that may come in the next five to ten years or so. I think we'll have the challenge of both right-sizing the agency, but making sure as well that we retain the core expertise and core strengths that we've always had as an agency in terms of doing good technical work and ensuring that we have the right kind of oversight in the field. We're at, at what I'd call a generational shift. You have fewer folks that look like me in the agency. Uh, we have a great new staff that we've added. But there's always a challenge, and this is something not only in the NRC, but in the industry itself, um, in terms of making effective connections through knowledge management be between people who have substantial experience and those who are newer to the agency. 
We need to keep continued vigilance in the coming years over the threat environment. We have a robust security profile at nuclear power plants. We're working well with others with respect to source security, but those are areas where we need to continue a, a focus. One other area involving security is the issue of cybersecurity, which is on many people's minds. We established requirements a number of years ago for nuclear power plants to have uh, cybersecurity protections, and we're working through the first phase of the implementation of those regulations. But that is an area I think all would agree that we need a continued focus on, just not only in the nuclear industry, but in other parts of the industrial sector in the United States. I have high confidence in our ability to meet our mission. Across the course of my career, I've seen us move through and address and successfully learn from a number of challenges, whether it's been particular events such as the Three Mile Island accident or the terrorist attacks in 2001, but also preparing ourselves for things like license renewal, uh, changes to our licensing process for new reactors. Those are things where we've used our experience, we've thought uh, carefully about how we can best address the challenges, and, and I think we've been very successful at, at meeting them. So I have a lot of confidence in the agency to shape itself and to respond and uh, also anticipate the future in the best way we can. My confidence stems largely from the quality of our dedicated staff at the agency. We have extraordinary talented people in all kinds of disciplines, scientific, engineering, law, administration. And they're the ones who contribute as a whole to the success of this agency. They have in the past, and I know that they will in the future.